We're live. Good evening, everybody. Uh, this is the Finance and Facilities Committee meeting for May 19th. It's uh, 6.31 p.m. And we'll start out by introducing ourselves. Uh, I'm David Warner. Uh, who's behind the Greenberg CSD icon tonight? Uh, I'm Zachary Baker, uh, BOCES tech employee. And the, uh, the, the handsome man to my right, well, at least on my screen, is uh, Dennis. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is uh, Dennis Puglise, um, the new director of facilities. Uh, Dennis has, uh, I guess, uh, 26 years of experience as a head custodian supervising a staff of 30 people at the Lakeland School District. He was a carpenter. He was a plumber. He had a degree in occupational therapy. If you go back far enough in time, uh, he has a lot of construction experience. Welcome, Dennis. Thank you for having me. Chris? Chris Allen, trustee, parent of two. Welcome, Dennis. Carol? Carol Allen, community member. Welcome, Dennis. Nice to meet you. Jim. Jim Wadig, BBS Architects, Project Architect for Greenberg Schools. Steve. Steve Morton, a parent of two at Woodlands and also the Vice President of the PTA Council. Fred. Fred Seba from BBS Architects and Engineers. I'm Director of Engineering and one of the partners here. Nice to meet you, Dennis. Yep, it's good to put a, uh, a face on the name. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Ashley. Ashley Pineda, board trustee and parent or two. Welcome, Mr. Puglisi. Nice to meet you, sir. Jessica. Good evening, Jessica Muldoon. Uh, parent of one, soon to be two in the district and welcome to Greenberg. Um, thank you. Katie, congratulations. Okay. Hi, Katie McGee, parent of a seventh grader at Woodlands. Uh, it's, uh, it says Gab's iPhone. Sorry, I keep having to fix that. I keep forgetting. Uh, that's uh, Gabriella. Uh, Gabriella, parent of three, uh, one, at Highview, one of LFJ, and almost a three-year-old. Megan. Hi, Megan Hack, um, a parent of an ECP student and a first grade student. Thank you. We've got a, a, a chat that says from Katie McGee that says, welcome, Mr. Piglisi. Thank you. So uh, anybody I missed? Okay, I think we're good. So the uh, next item on the agenda is the minutes. Let me, let me uh, try and bring those up. Let's see, share screen. Host disabled participant screen sharing. Zach, can you help me? Oh, I made you co-host. Okay, so let's see what I can find here. Let's see if that does anything for me. And that is not where I want to be. What do, what are you guys seeing? We're seeing your uh, Google Drive. Your FinFact committee, but not the specific meeting date. Okay. Okay. Okay, so these are minutes for 427. And I believe Carol has already found uh, something that needs to be needs to be deleted. Uh, so uh, our attendance was uh, Ash Ashley Pineda, Amy Ashley Moore, David Warner, Chris Fallon, Steve Morton, Jessica Muldoon, Fred Seba, Mike Falcone, Gabriella Barahona, Lisa Raymond, Carol Allen, Katie McGee, Megan Hack, James Wadick, James Bridgelaw, two L's at the end, and Zachary Baker. 
then we uh, adopted the previous meeting's minutes, um, heard a brief presentation on the upcoming school budget from Lisa Raymond, uh, talked about what the upcoming meetings were, that uh, opportunities for people to provide further feedback on the budget. Then we briefly discussed the May 15th health fair, Winsome Gordon uh, appeared and, uh, and gave us a, a little bit of information about that. I actually, um, I, I got, I, I went, uh, I didn't go when it opened, so I missed most of the speeches from the, from the, uh, the, the other politicians. But, uh, but it looked like people were having a good time and, and there was a lot of sort of health education going along on with that. Uh, and some uh, exercise dancing, we'll say that. Uh, then we discussed a facility, uh, there's, here's the error. Right here it says, per Lisa Raymond, we can use a portion of this funding for replacement instead of repairs that does not belong there. It's, uh, so I'm, I'm uh, assuming we're gonna delete it with, unless we find a home for it because uh, that has nothing to do with the, with the health care. Um, discuss facilities funding. Uh, we can review an updated project summary and funding sources. And we, we talked about that a little bit. And then what, what was in the repair reserve fund? I wonder, okay. Then we had an in-depth discussion of the RJ Bailey Auditorium and uh, went over some, some uh, previous notes. 450 seats, 118 were broken. Uh, BBS had given a set of preliminary estimates uh, and it totaled up to $515,000. Of that $110,000 were for asbestos abatement. And we decided to recommend to the board that uh, we do the asbestos abatement before applying for the project so that we wouldn't have to wait until the following summer to start the thing. And, uh, and that's, uh, that's since been passed on to the board. And uh, there was uh, no objection to that. The only real feedback that I, I, I got from that was um, the idea that we wanted to add on other things to make the uh, RJ Bailey Auditorium uh, better than it was before. There were cautions, don't, don't let the, uh, the overall cost get too high. Um, so that was, uh, that was kind of the feedback on that. Uh, so here's, right, the rec here are the two recommendations. Then, uh, BB and there, there was the BBS op op uh, recommendation for the opportunity to do other things to the auditorium. And then I got that feedback. That won't be in this min set of minutes, obviously, because it happened later. Um, we mentioned that uh, Tom Abenanti was attempting to get some funding uh, for that. I haven't heard anything further. Uh, is Lisa, Lisa's not on yet, right? I spoke with uh, Lisa. And what did she say? And uh, she was having some difficulty getting on with the uh, trying to connect. Okay. She said she was good. She's not in the normal place where she... Uh, I think she's staying in a hotel because uh, it, it's, it's cadet week or something. I think there's a West Point graduation has come and the place she normally stays. She had to go someplace that didn't have good Wi-Fi. So she was going to try and return to the office in order to get the Wi-Fi to work. Is she coming back to the office or is she trying to make it work by phone? She was trying to make it work on her uh, iPad, her phone. Uh, that was about 15 minutes ago. Okay. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll work around that to the best of our ability. Um, then, so we, I haven't heard anything further as to whether Tom Abenanti has had any success. Uh, I was hoping to ask her about that, but that, that's, that's where it was at the last meeting. Uh, we discussed raising funds by putting donors' names on new seats in the auditorium. Then we uh, reviewed uh, major pending facilities projects. Right, so you have the, uh, the uh, Warburg campus fire hydrant piece. You have the, uh, the phase one. Um, the, the, the phase one, largely ventilation and mostly the high view roof, though there's some other items in, in that. Uh, and uh, Dennis, I, I sent you uh, the, the copy of what's included in that, in that phase one project. Um, and we, we also have it on, on Google Drive if anybody wants to look back at that. Um, we talked about the energy performance contract and the detailed energy study, which is now underway. We talked about the, uh, the new security vestibule. At the time, we were still waiting for approval of the smart schools funds from Albany. Uh, we talked about the, uh, the mansion roof, and we wanted to see how the budget would turn out. And, uh, well, the budget has passed. Uh, I'm very happy about that. Then uh, 
I hope you, I hope you are too. Uh, then Lee F. Jackson, we talked about, we were waiting on a heating coil that had, uh, one of the two heating coils had frozen out and we were waiting on parts for that. Um, and uh, hallway asbestos abatement, which was scheduled for the summer. We'll talk about that again in a little bit. Um, high view third grade windows, uh, the, the one wing that we wanted to add openable windows to. Uh, there was a small water issue at the north end of the building. And then RJ Bailey, uh, the, the asbestos removal that had, been, that had uh, started in the previous uh, you know, recess and then had to be continued at the next recess that, that, that had been taken care of. Uh, the gym floor being uh, repairs that need to happen being in the budget. Curb and sidewalk, which uh, I, I think we've used up uh, a lot of our money for that. So we might have to address that after July 1. Uh, and a brief discussion about uh, the planning on the car wash property border. I have not seen, I have not looked at that. Uh, let's see. Uh, I know Tracy went to R.J. Bailey and had some questions about the about some uh, holes in the brickwork. I don't remember getting anything back about the the borderline. Does anybody know more than I do about whether or not any trees? But I haven't seen any trees planted along the the borderline with the car wash. So that's an outstanding issue. Uh, they had agreed when the uh, gas station was developed into a car wash that it's sort of unpleasant to look at and listen to this operating car wash right across from the, the Bailey parking lot. And so the, the, in their, their agreement with the town, they were supposed to plant trees right along the border and there's specifications as to what those trees are and, or, or shrubbery. Uh, and uh, they're supposed to have followed through and, and done that planting, but we have to enforce through the town, town of Greenberg. Okay. Um, Woodlands. Asphalt parking lots to be repaved. Uh, I don't know if you uh, if you, if you uh, went out and voted, then you saw the the handiwork. Uh, the lines weren't painted yet, but the the parking lot was smooth. Uh, the gym floor, which is included in the next year's budget, uh, the street lights the, in a couple of spots that were were dark had been replaced with uh, with lights that where you'd have two lights instead of one, and uh, we were pretty happy with that. Uh, concrete stairs on the C wing had been repaired. That's uh, the C wing. I guess uh, is is one of the ways uh, it was one of the places in Woodlands uh, where the administration that used to be in the administration building is now housed. Uh, so it was important to, to get that. Uh, we received requests for front steps, uh, front step repair for the for the uh, for the school parking lot. Uh, then we briefly discussed a po the possibility of a, a bus charging station. Uh, if there's a if there's a goal for buses to go from being diesel powered to being electric powered then you would end up with a bus charging station possibly uh, on campus and then you could charge the buses or some of the buses right where they were. Uh, we don't know of any plans to do that yet. Uh, I believe the, 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 the fleet that was planned to be replaced, uh, most of the replacements were not going to be electric vehicles. Uh, so um, that's pending. Um, then we talked a little bit about uh, phase two uh, not in any great depth or detail, but these are the priorities that we've discussed before. Um, the, 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 uh, the building envelopes, uh, meaning roofs and exterior walls, uh, anything BCS priority one or two, uh, and, and early childhood program classrooms. Um, we're waiting for the energy performance contract detailed study to be done so that we know what, what is going to be included in that and therefore uh, what will still have to go and be folded into phase two. And then the administration is supposed to come back with a proposal for phase two. Uh, we thank Mike Falcone for his nine years of service for the district. And, uh, and you know, he's welcomed him to his, you know, he's, he's retiring at the end of May. Uh, I assume you've interacted with uh, Mike Falcone a little bit during, uh, during this month. Am I correct, Janice? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and uh, Dennis uh, came in actually May 5th, uh, which was uh, shortly after the last meeting and has uh, been getting his feet wet, more like hitting the ground running. Mm -hmm. Then we talked about the Woodlands track team request. Uh, I read an email uh, in which they, they more or less, uh, the, 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 uh, the track team says, you know, we, we've got this nice AstroTurf football field, but we have this, this um, more or less blacktop track you can't wear shoes with shoes with cleats. Uh, you tend to get shin splints. It's it's not ideal, 
And, uh, and of course, there is, uh, there's an item in the building conditions survey for a half a million dollars that would, uh, that would put in a, uh, a rubberized track. And, but it's a priority three item. And then the question is, if we just work our way down for priority one, two, and three, uh, at the rate we're bringing money in, we might never get there. Uh, so the, the possibility is that, uh, you know, you, you can do some workarounds, but the, the general idea, you can try another find other sources of funding. But generally, um, if that is what the high school students want the most, as opposed to, say, the tennis courts, which we talked about before, then there's a possibility that if we go and do a bond, that a portion of that bond could also be um, whatever item that the, uh, that the students think is, th th that they want the most. Uh, and so uh, we just recently um, had appointed, and well, we didn't appoint her, she was, she was more or less elected, uh, a, our valedictorian, uh, Ann Panous, uh, to be a non-voting member or an ex officio member of the Board of Education. And we asked her to go and pull the students and see what it is that the students want to do to fix up Woodlands Middle High School the most. Yes, Mr. Morton. Uh, I just want to go on record to say that I would rather not have a, which one do they prefer because both of them need to be done. And I think that this should not be held at a, where you want the tennis court or do you want the track? Uh, to be honest with you, they should be both. And they're both in dire need. So I wanna go on record to say, I don't think we should give it to the kids to say either or. It's a, it's a shame to do that. It should be, we gotta get both done and they should be priority number one. Thank you. Would you consider that uh, we could get a, a set of answers from them instead of a single answer? I'm sorry, what was that? That is, um, let's say that um, I'm not controlling the structure of the survey at the moment because we've already set Anne in motion, but you could come back and say, okay, what came in first, what came in second, what came in third? And if they rise towards the top, and I think they will, then we have to look at what can we afford to do and, uh, and, so, and, uh, and work from that. And if we, can, if we think we can afford more than one, then we go for more than one. I think we ought to work toward trying to do whatever we can to get both of them. If it means going out and trying to find one of the companies to get a $500,000 grant for the track and then find a company to do maybe the tennis court or use our money or vice versa. But I think we just make them high priority because if you want the district to stay focused in Westchester County, Right now, nobody wants to come to Woodland to run track and nobody can come to play tennis. That's absurd in Westchester County, New York. If, if we can't compete and it's not fair to the kids to say, well, the track team gets it, but you can't get that. When some of the kids have chances for scholarship to go to college and we're putting that off for the sake of a parking lot. And we're putting it off for the sake of a, a building roof that may not even need to be done. So I, I think we're doing a disservice by saying priority three and two. I think it should be both priority one and we do whatever we can to try to get, we've got all these companies in this county. Somebody could just say, hey, we'll name it after us and do it. They do it all over the country. We just need somebody in the administration to go out and get it. Thank you. So if, uh, if funding comes in, I, I think that that's not going to be an issue. It's if we have to bond for it because, we, because those other avenues fail. All right, is there anything anyone sees in these minutes besides the one sentence that needs to be deleted uh, that, that needs to, yes, Jessica. Uh, sorry, I thought I, I, did, I know we're, we're approving minutes right now and and not having a full on discussion, but I think just while we're on this part right here. Sure. Whatever way to go forward with both of these or the different sports fields, I think it's important to also explore how much revenue they might generate. Um, so if these do go into a bond, um, what might we be able to generate back because of that space and being able to rent that space out? We know how difficult it is um, to get some really good fields to use. 
Um, so I think there is a, a way that this is not just a cost for the district, but also something that could help fund itself. Um, and that might be an important selling point um, for people who might not think that these are important ways to spend money, um, but kind of like the energy performance contract, how like it pays itself back over time, these investments might pay itself back differently over time too. Good point. Uh, I believe both the, uh, both the uh, representative of the track team and uh, Matt Smith uh, agree with you, uh, feeling that we can get some money from Section 1 if we can host track meets as well as cross-country meets uh, in the district, and that that, would, that, might, uh, that might work to our favor. Yes, Katie? Yeah, while we're on this, I didn't see track specifically on the agenda. Um, can anyone explain why, I think it was one of the young students who brought it up, um, the jump pit, I think it was, or the long jump, something. They mentioned that it was like not even usable, it's overgrown. Um, why do, why, what's the obstacle there for keeping that in shape? I do not know. Um, I, I think probably it can be fixed. So yes, Dr. Allen. I move we accept the minutes with the corrections as made. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Minutes adopted and I need to take a note. Jump, long jump pit overgrown. Why a problem? Okay. Can everyone see the agenda? Yes. 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 Okay. Introductions, minutes, budget. And at this point, Lisa Raymond uh, would, uh, would come back and tell you that, the, uh, that our 1.47% uh, budget increase has passed. Uh, on 517, there was a, we had an election uh, and, uh, and a budget vote and uh, the yes votes were 500 and the no votes were 156. Of course, these are uno the unofficial uh, tallies, but at the next board meeting, we'll make them official uh, with a spread like that. It's very unlikely that any anything that we find is going to change that result. Uh, so the, the, once the board adopts the results, we're, we're good to go. So it appears that uh, that the voters were uh, were happy with us. So uh, that's a that's a good thing. Um, the uh, facilities pro uh, funding project summary. Uh, I, I've got it up on Google Docs if you want to look at it. It has not changed since last time. Yes, Dr. Allen. Since you're mentioning the votes, I would like to bring up that we met with, a, we spoke with a resident of High Point at the polls the other day. Mm -hmm. and once again, said that they are not getting our mailings so that they were unaware of what the budget was, uh, was uh, about and the candidates. I would like to suggest that we direct we at that we make a recommendation to the board that the district study do a formal study as to why the residents of High Point and any other areas that we identify are not getting their mailings. Okay. Been hearing this long um, enough. We need to figure out how to make it work. I would I would suggest that. Um, We've been down this road before. It, it might be that if we identify that there are certain places that are problems, that maybe we should actually do a verification that when we're, when we're actually in election season and the uh, budget newsletter has gone out, maybe we should be spot checking to see if certain places have received, uh, have received the newsletter. I think uh, we need to look into it in advance. Let's not wait for the next mailing to fail. Let's take active steps now so that the next mailing will get to the intended recipients. I think we should do both. All right, go ahead, Chris. If I may, I don't know if this could be governance, if this could be CEC, but since we will, well, I don't know. I don't want to speak it's out probably of turn. CEC. I don't know. Well, I don't know if we're going to mail calendars this year, um, but maybe if you could note it down for CEC to pass to that chair and I can note it down and maybe at a non-budget mailing time, 
we can we can do what you're both suggesting and and do some verification and or a, a study of some sort because I agree if I mean I, I live in a building where some you know so depending on the year sometimes they just get dumped down at the where you could pick it up or not uh, sometimes they get put into our individual slots so I, I can't speak for how high point high point runs or their mail delivery but that might not be the problem you're right it might be an issue of just getting it to the location so David if you don't mind I'll that's my suggestion okay well one of the things I would say is that we have multiple newsletters per year so one way of testing things is to do verification on the on the next newsletter that comes out instead of waiting for the budget newsletter and that could be part of the way that we study it you uh, send everything out and look and see what makes it and what doesn't I would like to mention when I looked at my uh, mailing it's addressed to current residents and if the post office has a batch of a thousand flyers addressed to current resident, they might not be stuffing them in every mailbox. So I think we need to carefully assess what's going on. Okay, I, I believe you have the option of saying such and such name or current resident, and that might, ha that might have an effect too. Uh, causing low priority. Delivery, okay. Katie. Yeah, um, I know someone who thinks she's like off the list or something because she never gets the newsletter and she gets, you know, personal, she gets letters from the school district if, you know, she has a children there. But so I'm wondering, um, you know, if she wanted to let someone at the district know, who is that? Is it Joya? Is it uh, Lisa? Like who? Joy is a good a good starting point. Okay, and um, also like in terms of high point, you know, who are you guys going to reach out to for verification? You mean? I mean, I I would ask Walter Simon, but uh, uh, we need to we need to, need to do more than that, right? We need to ask multiple people. Uh, so. Uh, it's a good I, they're representatives, right? So, so yeah. High Point has its own, uh, the equivalent of a civic organization. So we look for the leadership of the civic organization and then and ask them, are people getting the newsletters? Uh, and, and get some feedback that way. That would work. Yes. Okay. And just since you mentioned Joya and for the public that's watching and for those in the meeting, Joya Ponticello is our new district clerk. Her email address is J P like Peter O N T I C E L L O at greenbergcsd.org. Apologies in advance, Joya, <laughs> but we're searchable on the website as well. <laughs> okay. okay. Good. All right. So, uh, are there any other comments on the on the budget or the uh, the communications issues related to the budget? Okay, so we kind of have our marching orders there, and we need to determine which committee wants to do that. Whether it's uh, whether it's us because we can we can make the justification that it's financial, or whether we want to do it through the CEC because they're supposed to be dealing with outreach. Okay. Um, all right, so that's, uh, that's kind of that. Uh, facilities funding is, is uh, unchanged from last time. Uh, the RJ Bailey Auditorium, uh, I believe we discussed this when we looked at the minutes. Um, you had uh, added some pictures, I think, of the current status of the RJ Bailey Auditorium, and maybe I should attempt to bring those up and see if we can take a look at them. And then I think Chris did that. Let's see, R.J. Bailey Auditorium, one. Can't preview the file, great. Can anybody see a picture at this point? No. No. No, okay. I think this is what happened last time. All right, so let me. Bring that back up. And I'm going I, to... I think you clicked on the icon 
Perhaps you should click on the word that says R.J. Bailey Auditorium. Did you get anything now? Yes. Yes, yes we have it. Okay. All right, so that's a close up. Uh, Chris, what are we looking at? That's a close up of a, an, an unusable chair. You see an X marked there and you'll see now an additional set of pictures that kind of try to get a wider shot of the full auditorium where they've marked the hundred plus chairs that are unusable. So you get you get a real visceral feel for why uh, why we can't have functions in there in addition to the, the safety issues with plaster falling and the ventilation. Um, and I'm going to see if I can uh... Yeah, Down sorry. A different, uh, a different. Yeah, a, a lot of these chairs different. either don't have seats or uh, are missing a leg in some cases. Um, I think for the most part, you know, or the, the seats themselves were wobbly, so I think some, they've taken them off. I don't want to speak out of turn, um, but I, I believe that's what happened in some of those cases. Um, and just for Dennis's sake, to let him know, this has been in disrepair for quite a few years. This is not. Uh, something from 2020. These Can you see the messed, ceiling? Uh, <laughs> these seats have been around and messed up for a long time. Can so, you see the ceiling? Not yet. No. no. Nothing. Yeah. Oh, great. So I have to stop, share, and reshare for every... Uh, this is not good. Okay. Okay. Share screen. Uh, this is the, the, I'm sorry, this is the picture of the ceiling. Uh, yep. There obviously are roof leaks and, uh, and that means that the plaster uh, is not as it should be and the paint peels and uh, until you fix the roof leaks, uh, every time you repaint, it just, it just comes right back. So mm -hmm. that we know that there are, there are several leaks, I think at least three leaks that need to be fixed. You've yeah, got some stuff up towards the top of the screen, some in the middle and some towards the, the back of the auditorium. I think you're mm -hmm. facing towards the back of the auditorium here. Now, let me see if I can bring in the... Um, other picture of the seat. Okay. Are we going to be making some sort of recommendation after we look at these pictures? Uh, we actually made a recommendation uh, at our last meeting. I just, but I, uh, I thought that we were, we had seen all of this and, uh, and, and shown it to the world. And uh, so I wanted to, uh, to let other people see it. So just a minute, let me see. No, back to that. Stop share, go back to one more picture. I think this is the one. Okay, now I can see it and you can't, right? Correct. Right. So go back here. Share screen. Boom. Okay, all the X's you see are seats that are, uh, are, are not something that you can sit in because they are broken. And uh, do you have any further comments on this? No, I mean, it's, it's shaded. They go all the way back. It's the, like you said, there's like over 100, near 120. Well, you probably have it here, don't you? 100 plus. 118. 118. 118 seats that are broken. You can see the last couple of seats where they have the lighting here are slightly different colored. Those are newer seats. So, so those are actually okay. Everything else is so old that you can't get re replacement parts for them. If you take them out, you have to uh, you have to pull them out and there's asbestos tile under the carpeting. And therefore, uh, this was the recommendation that we clear all of this out over the summer when there are no students here. We do it ourselves. Don't make it part of the NYSED project. We eat, uh, we eat a possible $10,000 in aid, but it means that we don't have to wait until the following summer to begin again construction. Uh, the idea is then that we come back uh, apply for the NYSED approval for all of the other work, the uh, roof repair work, the ceiling work, um, and uh, installing new chairs. And then, uh, and then we get aid on that 
and we can do it during the school year because there'll be no asbestos for us to, us to worry about. Uh, there's one other issue. The, there's some lead paint inside the projection booth. The projection booth is up here. Uh, most of the time we haven't been using the balcony, but there, there, there's a, an issue here and there's a, there's a little bit of cleanup that has to happen there as well. Okay, that's what I wanted to show. Yes, Chris. So speaking of the projection booth, Mrs. Rossi says, I mean, the goal is to get all of the technical stuff that's usually occupying the first few rows of seating mm -hmm. up to that balcony area. So um, first of all, you get a better shot when you're filming, uh, filming the students uh, so that when it's put on the TV and on YouTube, you, you can actually see student faces. And so that we're also not obstructing uh, viewers down there. Mrs. Rossi also confirmed that what you'd said in a previous meeting that, you know, stuff had fallen from the ceiling uh, in the past, which is uh, not really good. Fun. Right. Um, I, I have a question, though, about about this item tonight. Um, I just want to know, have we scheduled now the asbestos work? I don't know who can answer this, but is that now scheduled and ready to go for the summer while we work on the other pieces with while so, BDS works on, with admin for the other part? I, okay. I did talk to Lisa and uh, Lisa indicated that we have to pass a resolution uh, and we could get that by the uh, by the first meeting in June of the board to uh, for a budget code transfer for the large amount of asbestos cleanup that has to happen. So that will uh, double uh, for um, indicating that the board, in fact, uh, uh, approves of this portion of the project and this method of doing things by having a, a resolution just for us to vote on and puts the funding in place so that we can do this large amount of asbestos cleanup. So we can't schedule the cleanup until we voted on the resolution. So we, yes. So we'll have an exact amount and then we'll have the vote early June and then we can have the cleanup. Uh, wait. Did Katie have her hand up and now we're at Megan? Uh, Katie first. I did, I, I took it down, but anyway, um, I saw, I think you even have it in your agenda or minutes that at least one person on the board of ed objected to doing more than any expensive, I, I guess like the curtains and some other things that were suggested last time um, and the sound system. So, um, I'd like to know what's the plan for that then? If that is that going to be shelved for until an unknown time, or are we going to try to fundraise for it perhaps? And if so, who would be doing that? Um, would we, you know, do we want to decide whether we're shelving that, or is that still maybe still under discussion because the board didn't vote? on that, but- um, uh, the, the board has not voted on it. If, uh, if that doesn't, uh, if, if that's not something that will fly in terms of getting approval for the main project, obviously the uh, asbestos cleanup part goes forward with or without. The administration can go back and, and, and forth. You come up with a more detailed proposal and, uh, and we can talk to the board and figure out whether pe what people are willing to vote for. If they're not, then yes, you go and, and look for alternative uh, sources of funding and go from there. Uh, obviously, if you at least get rid of the chairs up on the balcony, then there, there's space where there wasn't space before for, uh, for equipment. Um, that's my thinking. We have to know. I think you need to put numbers to it. OK, so right now what's happening is people are saying, don't spend too much money. Don't let this uh, elegance creep in and make it too expensive for us to be able to afford it but we don't know how much these things cost. So if the cost is not very significant, you may get a slightly different message. So you need some numbers before you actually know whether the board will completely support it or not. So I would suggest we come up with numbers and then see if we get a yes or no. Yeah, I appreciate that approach. I will just say that I took my daughter to NISMA in Mamaroneck High School and mm -hmm. in you know, the end of April and they have uh, modern seats and they have brass plates, like in memory of, you know, Katie McGee or class of 2020, mm -hmm. Sarah, you know, Flanagan. So, I, you know, it can be done. We could figure out how by even contacting them and that kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm saying like, if not for the seats, but yeah, to be able to afford the curtains yep. and like kind of do it. So it's brought up all, you know, all together and, right. um, you know, that's a very old building, Mamaroneck High School, but yet they have a renovated auditorium. And there's no reason why we can't have that. Good thought. All right, Megan? 
Um, I think I'm just a little confused on the timing. So you said the uh, approval for the uh, asbestos abatement for this summer would be in the June board meeting. Isn't there a meeting next week for the board? Why couldn't approval be done earlier? I asked Lisa and she said, I can get the amount in and figure out where the money is coming from in terms of budget code transfers, but it'll take me a little time to do it. So uh, I said, you know, can you do it? I, I actually asked that question and, uh, and she said, uh, I can certain, I'm not sure I can do it any sooner, but I'm certain that I can do it by the, by the first meeting in June. So I'm just relaying back to you what the administration thinks they can do. So then if it's approved, the first meeting in June, can it be done this summer? I believe so. Dennis? So I would say at this point, what Dennis should probably be doing yeah. is going to the firm that Michael Falcone and the district have used in the past to do your abatement. And I think you're doing abatement this summer as well. Mm -hmm. Go to that firm and start to get pricing now, even before the board approves it. That way you'll kind of have a head start on that so that once the board approves it, they can just cut the PO and they can get started as soon as school is out. And they can look at their calendar. Yeah, correct. Um, I've been working uh, with uh, some proposals already uh, with uh, two different abatement contractors. Um, uh, the, uh, the usual one we deal with, and I also uh, uh, saved the uh, school district some money by uh, going uh, off of an open contract. Uh, could you guys hear me? Yes, yes. we can. Yes. Okay. And uh, uh, the to the point where the original contractor, uh, not to lose the job, he, he uh, dropped uh, $21,685 off of the abatement costs. So that was uh, significant. That's at Jackson. Yeah. That's at uh, Lee F. Jackson uh, for the corridor uh, um, uh, abatement there. Okay, so you've had experience, you're already having experiences with our asbestos removal contractors. Correct. Okay, I can call them up and uh, tell you, get a couple of contractors in here to get some numbers and, you know, to expedite, you know, for when the funding comes into place. Mm -hmm. Jim? I just wanted to mention that in addition to the floor abatement, all those seats need to be removed. Yes. And so, you know, the, the auditorium will be completely unusable for you know, next school year, unless you're bringing in portable chairs and stuff. They don't use it now. Oh, right. So I guess just no big deal there. Um, well, and, the, the point is to move forward as quickly as we can. Yep. I just want to make sure everyone's aware of, you know, it's not going to be like, okay, we can work around the seats. Everything goes out. It's not just the floor. It's the seats, the carpet, and then what's under the carpet. And then we get to see the condition of all that. And then, you know, and you know it's that's all, right. our new scope is when, what gets approved in next year's budget. Um, but right now there's, you know, the money that we kind of laid out at our last meeting was just specific to the interior finishes, the seating, the ceiling replacement, the roof repair. There was nothing for bringing the electronics in the in a booth down to the main level and providing some sort of console for that all to happen. We did talk about it, saying that that's something that, you know, should be a consideration if the money would be available. And we can certainly get you pricing on that. We okay. work with um, Advanced Sound on the audio on the audio side or, and then um, Barbizon on a the theatrical side and their, um, you know, top uh, contractors in, in the field of those things. And they're very good to us in terms of, you know, scoping stuff with, uh, you know, minimal amount of information. They like to come out and see the space. They want to just get a, a real sense from the person who's really running that area to determine what is needed in and how minimal of a scope they can, provide with expandability in the future. So start small, go big. It is only an elementary school auditorium. It's not your high school auditorium, but it still needs, you know, to be treated as, you know, as a major space in the building and it's, and it's historic look needs to be, you know, considered in, in any way, shape or form as what we do in there. Of course. Um, so the seating that you see now with all the wood backs, you're not mm -hmm. going to see any of that. You'll see cushion backs, but we will try to, you know, if there's any end panels that could be refinished and reinstalled, we, we've done that in the past where it at least maintains some of that historic integrity. Mm -hmm. um, but there may not be anything worth salvaging, but we can put back something that has a little bit of a um, antique looking um, uh, aesthetic to it, but give it the comfort of a modern seat. The other thing is that the new seating 
is a couple inches wider. So someone asked the question of, can we bring in an entire class into that space? Uh, right now it seats 450 people. Um, I don't know that we would get 450 people by the time we put in handicap seating and account for two inches increase in width of, of modern uh, seats as opposed to the seats that were there now, which are probably 18 to 19 inches wide. So how many seats do you estimate that we'll end up having? I have no, I, I couldn't estimate that. I got to give right, that to, to our senior contractor. All right. And that would be probably J.S. McHugh. Um, he does a lot of our seating. It's an Irwin seating product, which has been used in many auditoriums, a lot of varieties to choose from. So we would like to you know, start that process even before we have, I guess, an official go ahead to go forward because some of those things can be ordered early. Um, you know, with a uh, letter of intent. And then when everything gets approved, you can issue purchase orders. But you, we want to see samples of the seats. So it's a process. Thank God we have the time, like you're putting forward the abatement to get it done right up front and giving us, you know, the time frame until next year's budget to uh, work out the, you know, actual scope and start to, you know, get things in place for everyone to kind of sit down and look at and see and, and approve. Uh, we're trying to get this to happen, uh, Sooner rather than later, that's the purpose of doing the asbestos abatement up front. So we, we kind of want to want to move. Right, um, but you wouldn't have money in place until next year's budget. No, I think they have money. They say here for that. I think we have money. Oh, OK, right. I'm sure you had some when we moved, right? Yes, I think okay. we have enough money to move forward with this. Okay. So once we get the go ahead, we'll meet with uh, Dennis and the staff of the building and get some input on them. You know, if they want a sound system in there, what kind of level of quality sound system are we looking at? Same thing with theatrical lighting, if they need something like that. And then we'll put estimates to it and then come back to the committee and you guys can talk it over and figure it out. Dr. Allen. A first question, Mr. Weidig, are we required to install seats that are two inches wider than the current ones? Or is that uh, simply the, in fashion these days? Um, that's the way the seats are manufactured. They don't make them any narrower. I believe that is probably a code requirement. Okay. Then my second uh, comment is I would be opposed to cushion seats because of the need to keep the place clean and sanitary. You really can't easily clean cushioned seats. And with our concerns about sanitation these days because of COVID, that needs to be a primary consideration in choosing the seating that we use. I don't think I've ever been in an auditorium that didn't have cushioned seats. I don't know why those auditoriums are, I guess, dirty and this you know, wouldn't be. I, I, I would disagree with that. The seats are made with fabrics that are um, mo um, very resistant to staining and absorbing moisture. Um, and I think it, it will probably be a disservice to not have those seats. I don't even know if you can get wood seats, to be honest with you. I've never seen it in a catalog. so. Maybe there is a line somewhere that we haven't dealt with that does have them. As long as it's some sort of plastic that can be wiped down with a wet solution, that would, should be sufficient. We'll look at different options. We'll talk to different manufacturers and then we'll come back to the committee with some different thoughts and ideas. Also, you know, auditorium seats, typically there's no eating or drinking in the auditorium. So they take less abuse than something in a cafeteria or a lounge or something like that would be. So. Uh, we can have that discussion. It's a good point. Okay. We look forward to your samples. Other comments? Okay. So um, moving on from that. Uh, when, when do you think you can come back with estimates? When? When? Um, as soon as we can set up a meeting, I would say, and meet with whatever staff you want us to meet with, uh, and then we'll start to do some estimating. So a couple of weeks after we're able to meet with the staff in the building, I would say. Okay. Staff meeting plus two weeks. Yeah. Date plus two weeks to estimate. Okay. All right, then we're going to move on and let's see.
see if I can. This may take a minute. Okay. Okay, I have the agenda. Now I need you to be able to see the agenda. What are you looking at right now? Our pictures. Okay. On the screen. Okay. Can you see the agenda? Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. We've talked about the R.J. Bailey Auditorium. We are now down to status of other facilities projects. Um, Mr. Puglisi, would you like to run down the list? Can you see it? Uh, yes, I could see it. Uh, where would you like me to begin? Uh, the top right of here. Harbor Campus Lines and Hydrants? Yes. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, and I'll tell this story if you need me to. Okay. Oh, the retired. Yeah, so oh, with the... Uh, yeah, yeah, that would be a good uh, place for you to start, and then I'll pick up about the okay. waterline. So, so basically, as you may recall, the board has already approved uh, the eight hundred thousand uh, dollar version of the uh, of the waterline project to improve uh, water pressure and add two fire hydrants to Woodlands to bring us up to where we should be. Uh, and uh, and the next stage was to I think get a topographical survey, and you guys are working on that. Meanwhile, on the 17th, as, uh, as I was standing there being up for election, uh, people would come to me with information and requests as they, as they marched towards the polls. And an, an elderly gentleman came and said, uh, gosh, you know, I know where there's a 14 inch long, uh, diameter water line that will solve all of your problems. And it's located very close to the Warburg campus. And I couldn't quite get who the, who, who the gentleman was. He gave me a business card. I passed on the phone number from it. And then I looked him up online and found out that, uh, that uh, Walter Schoonmaker was the, was the Hartsdale fire chief in the 1990s. So he probably knows whereof he's speaking. So uh, that's worth certainly investigating to find out if there's a, a, another source uh, that, that we can tap into that, that uh, and we'll compare that to... Uh, the options that we've already come up with and, and see if it, if it helps us in any way. So I've, I've passed that information on. Yes, Chris. So when I was at ECP yesterday, um, it, my mind clicked when I was looking at the people who were gardening in the farm and mm -hmm. the fact that they have a spigot there. Does that spigot, this is probably related to two things. Does that spigot connect to a different water line, the one we're looking for that is built to the town or does it, does that garden spigot for the town's farm gardening area connect to GCSD line and we pay that water bill? So, uh, so I'm wondering, is that the line we're looking for to hopefully reduce our fire hydrant costs? And secondly, if I'm just wondering, does, does that water get billed to GCSD? That's two prong question. Okay. And Dennis, I'll bet you don't know that yet, but you can find out. Is that correct? <laughs> I absolutely don't know, but I will absolutely find out. Okay. Thank I'll you. also go back and look at the plot plan that we laid out in working with Michael Falcone, as well as the town and the two fire departments. And we have tried to locate all of the lines that are in the vicinity. You remember we're trying to do a loop system as opposed to a single tap so that you have the ability to be fed in either direction. It's a better long-term solution for the district. So, and, and I shared that with the gentleman. Okay, right. go ahead. Our status on that is that we did get a proposal for survey topo work on that. And I sent it up to Lisa. Mm -hmm. She took a look at it and said, um, you know, we're going to need a couple more proposals. So we're working on that. I then asked her if we could put it through our contract to speed things up. 
and I'm just waiting to hear back from her. So that's okay. a possibility. But and the last thing I heard through. was that she thought you needed competing bids. So we'll uh, we'll see how that goes because it, it's a, a large enough uh, item. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. So that's 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 as much as I know about the about the uh, the fire hydrants in the, in the water system. Any questions, comments? Uh, phase one, uh, the five million dollar largely ventilation and high view roof project submitted to New York State Education Department back in December 2021 with the, the uh, idea that they would come back to us prior to the end of the school year, and then we could begin construction in, in the, this coming summer. Uh, the question now is, uh, has there been any movement from uh, NYSED? Is there, are we any closer to approval? We have our engineering and construction approval. I've sent a uh, request to uh, Sigrid Coons to find out when we would get final sign-off from the project manager. I don't think there's any lingering information that they're waiting on. So I've gone ahead and sent uh, Lisa a copy of a invitation to bidders so we can put the project out on the street, even without SED approval. We can, we're allowed to do that. You're just not allowed to award the contract with without the approval. So I'm assuming that in the next week or so, we would have the state approval. Now, the only risk we run is if they come back with additional comments from the design end. Mm -hmm. um, but that shouldn't be. It's it's in the project manager's hands now, so there might be paperwork approval, and that wouldn't be anything that a contractor would affect his price. So we're we're going forward with that. So the bid pickup would be next Friday, or plans would be available to contractors next Friday. Um, we put the project out for four weeks. We'd have a pre-bid walkthrough a week before the bid opening. I believe I set the bid opening for Thursday, June twenty third. Um, and then we'll have to, you know, sort out the contractors, you know, do our due diligence on um, vetting them out, making sure they have all the project work scope. And that'll take, a, you know, a, a meeting or two, and then we can send our recommendation to the district. Um, and that can go before the, the board to, to make the awards. So um, right now we're in the process of, of just moving forward right now. We have to get something going. There are a lot of issues right now in, across the industry with availability of materials, specifically unit ventilators and mechanical things. Mm -hmm. um, so it wouldn't have mattered if we bid this thing in April or even February, we bid a project that we're finding out we're not getting the materials. So I don't know what's going on. There's nothing we can do to prevent that. Um, it just means we need to be a little specific in our construction schedule to identify that this project will extend into the school year at which time the contractors will have to be aware that they'll be doing work after hours, which is not a problem. We do that all the time. Um, the biggest school being RJ Bailey with the amount of work that's going yes. on there. Um, yeah, that would be the most disruptive, but I think other buildings, the mechanical work is kind of minimal and out of sight. So it's really not going to affect anybody, even if it had to, some work had to occur during the day. Um, some of the work that will be happening at, Highview Elementary School, the roof shouldn't be a problem to get done. There's some interior work where we're taking out glass panels and putting in fire mm -hmm. wall Solid walls over the That's gym. Readily yeah. available material that'll be no problem getting done. Um, the middle, um, the early childhood building, we're renovating three toilets in there. I think that's work that you know, should be able to be done. They're relatively small toilets, more or less residential work. So two, you know, four weeks and those will be done. But there is mechanical work there that's quite involved, again, um, involving unit ventilators and stuff like that. So the contractors mm -hmm. could probably run their piping and get their, their rough in work done and then just have to sit back and wait till the equipment shows up, um, you know, to, to connect everything and, and, you know, do their final work on that, which, like I said, would probably be something that would extend, uh, you know, into the fall. Okay, uh, as as I kind of suspected, but we're beginning to move and I'm glad to hear it. Ashley? Thank you. Um, <clears throat> a few questions come to mind. So obviously we are in the situation we're in. Uh, <clears throat> you know, we put those temporary fan units in the windows in most of our buildings mm -hmm. due to COVID. I think our plan was for those to initially be temporary solutions, right? Um, it seems like our window is going to extend a little bit. So this question is more for Mr. Puglisi to, to look into, because I'm sure you don't have the answer right now, which is moving forward, you know, what fan units of those, win of those uh, window units, do they need maintenance? Do they need to be replaced? Because it looks like they're going to be 
-hmm. extending beyond the useful life we anticipated they would have. So you might have some that start dying at this point. Um, the other thing is, you know, are we monitoring them on an operational basis, on a daily basis? Since they're going into extended life, we know these things have a mean time between failure. They're probably approaching the top end. So we probably need to increase our monitoring of those units. Uh, also checking if we have a few spares on hand um, just to buy us that additional time we need until these projects get wrapped up. And then the last question I have, um, I know we were doing replacements on the MERV 13 filters uh, over the last year and a half or two years. How long COVID's been around at this point? I've lost track. Uh, so the question is, what is the what is our schedule that we're checking those filters out? How often are we checking them, replacing them, et cetera? Uh, I think that would be helpful to have since it sounds like this is going to extend a little bit beyond what we had originally planned. Thank you. I, I, I did speak with the... Uh... The, uh, the guys that changed their rooftop units, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, my first couple of questions in are you, which uh, MERV ratings are you guys uh, replacing your filters with? And um, uh, they said they've uh, been uh, increased to MERV 13, most of the units. And I was, uh, my second question was, uh, you know, how often do you uh, change them? Is it every three months, every six months? And they said they go up every uh, few months. And I said, oh, do you guys treat them with the uh, antimicrobials and, uh, you know, um, the filters themselves, mm -hmm. uh, that typically lasts about 60 days or so. Um, and they weren't at the point of uh, doing that though. So, um, I, I did inquire about, you know, what the filters were, how often they're changed. And, uh, they seem to have a, a, a good handle on it. You know, they check the units, uh, at least every three months. And I know that from, uh, previous facilities walkthroughs, that uh, that every so often uh, a, a window fan will die, and since they're being plugged in every day, then then, then what was happening was the, the at least the custodian we talked to was said yes I have some extra fans and when one dies I I, I swap it out, but uh, I don't know how many they have in reserve or whether it's difficult to uh, to get more fans to replace them. Okay, I don't know what to, what they have on reserves at this point. Okay, uh, but I'll look into it. Megan? Um, it sounds like for phase one, we're on like the best timeline that we can be at this point, mm -hmm. um, but obviously work will go into the fall. And um, it sounds like Bailey would really be the only building internally that would be disrupted due to the work. Um, what's the process for informing, I guess, the building principal to let them know that there might be spaces that they may need to consider different usages for in the fall to make sure that students are not disrupted in their learning? Um, typically, when we have our contractors sorted out, we kind of know where, where we're moving forward. We would meet with um, the director, director of facilities, um, the individual or superintendent, uh, the building principals is in one meeting and say, okay, this is our schedule for moving forward. These are the um, spaces that are going to be interrupted or, or disrupted at some point in time. Um, and then discuss with them if there's any preference to how things move in terms of, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say phasing, but work areas that need to you know, be avoided in, at certain times of the year. So we would definitely get their input through a, uh, you know, a joint meeting with everybody. And then, so our facilities director would be responsible for relaying that message to the building staff so that they can better yes, plan Yes, there's for uh, typically construction meetings, you know, to work out the logistics of, uh, uh, are we displacing this classroom because of the work next door or however it would affect the project? That's typically what happens, yes. And the building principal definitely has to be involved to, you know, for their thoughts in, in, and in coordination with the contractors. Remember, so how far in advance, because I know we don't know the timeline right now. So is that something that like by August, we should have that timeline for the schools to prepare for September? Or is it kind of, we'll see as it comes up? No, we'll have something before August. Um, in our contract documents, our specifications, we'll have a timeline of construction so I'll be, um, I think, meeting with Dennis in one, two, I think, three weeks to kind of uh, set that up. I'll put together my rough dates and we'll, you know, correspond back and forth via email. 
to see if these dates kind of jive with um, start of school, end of school, any programs, you know, holidays where we can, you know, allow contractors to get in during, you know, certain breaks, you know, nice October is a great time when there's the um, religious holidays to kind of get a big chunk of work done Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And so those things, you know, believe it or not really do help. And it's good to identify those things in the list. So we will have a, an idea prior to bid opening of, of, of those things. And then from that, um, the information can be conveyed uh, through Dennis to the uh, building principals. Okay. We're hoping to get work started this summer mm-hmm. and then right. continue on to into the school year. So we'll actually be in contact with the principal sooner than August, probably sometime in mid-July, and then have Dennis sit in with that and then kind of brainstorm and let them know exactly what's planned. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, other questions or comments? Okay, moving on to energy performance contract. Uh, We uh, obviously, uh, Con Ed Solutions was doing their detailed energy audit. Uh, Then uh, the, the, uh, the, I believe have committed to uh, site visits uh, in a window from the first week in June to the first week in July. Uh, so that's a little further out than I thought, but I think we, we took a little bit more time to, uh, to make our selection than I think we had first anticipated. So I, I don't think that that's, too, that's not too big a, a problem. Uh, so then the question is, um, It'll, I know it'll take a couple of years to do all of the work. Uh, when do you think that the audit completion date will be if they're done with their, if they're done with their walkthroughs by the first week of July? Uh, when are they going to have, uh, have their final, you know, their contract and presentation for us to show to the board uh, for us to vote on it? I think they're talking a couple of months after they're done with all of their walkthroughs to be able to come back with their investment grade audit proposal for review by BBS and the district. So uh, uh, energy performance contract proposal in September, you think? Yes. Okay. And they did uh, have an interesting discussion. We had an interesting discussion with them, with Michael at some point. Um, Michael was talking about the battery energy storage system. Yes. And, you know, the property over there. And Michael had said to them, well, you know, we, we have a, a big field over there that we cleared. It's probably the size of a football field. So they asked if the district would be interested in talking about ground mount solar over there. And one of the issues the district had with ground mount solar was clearing of cutting trees. down trees. And we wouldn't have to clear any trees potentially over there. So They are going to look at that as part of the investment grade audit, and that will be an option for the district to consider when they come back in the fall. Okay. I understand if they come back and say, yeah, but we need to clear a bunch of trees. There'll be an issue. Okay. They understand the concern. And, you know, we told them that's why the district did not want to move ahead. But then when Michael mentioned this cleared area, they said, well, that might be- I, I think the cleared area would, would, would uh, work just fine for the battery energy solar, uh, storage system, but I'm, I'm not so certain that there's enough uh, land to do, what, to do what they wanna do. But yeah, I'll, I'll let them look. Okay, uh, Chris. So I'm just gonna say, if we might vote on that in September, maybe when we're scheduling the walkthroughs before school opens, we take a visit to that area as part of our walkthrough. Sure. Thank you. And include Morton House site and annual BOE walkthrough. Okay. Dennis, I think Other. that. Um, the Con Ed was also looking for an exact location of that Martin House site. I don't know yes. if Michael ever got back to them. The uh, sidewalk I, I, is sitting there. <laughs> okay, you could just look and see two little bushes with a piece of sidewalk between it, and that's where the house used to be. Right. Yes, I, uh, I I went on the site uh, with Mike and uh, I toured that, and I uh, I had a conversation with Mike. Uh, he hasn't been in for uh, a few days or so, uh, quite a few days now, but uh, I did a. Uh, 
ask him what I thought that the site was over by the, the football field. The site that he was uh, referring to was over by the church that they had just cleared some property behind where the uh, homestead was that was uh, removed. Right. So you have the, uh, the, the extension of Juniper Hill. If Correct. you were to For go up Juniper Hill station. Road from Terrytown, you would, uh, you would, as you were about to run into the church, you make a, a, a right. And there's a road that used to be somewhat paved and isn't much anymore. And it's a, it, it's a good distance. Uh, I don't know if it's half a mile, but it's, it's, it's a long distance uh, away. And you come down to where you're about to run into the golf course. You make a left turn and, and there on your right is where the, is where the house was. Yes. Uh, Ashley? Uh, I was just going to suggest, I think anyone here pretty much knows where the Morton House site was. We could probably just walk over and show you, Dennis, uh, exactly where it was. And then you. Yeah, I, I was I was I was showed where the house was, the site. Exactly. Yeah. OK, good. Okay. Perfect. OK, other questions or comments on that? Moving on, Woodlands Middle High School, new security vestibule. For Carlos Ramirez, who who uh, who is uh, used to work at the state and uh, and is checked on various reports, uh, and we do have that that report uh, up on Google Docs if you want to look. Uh, Four hundred fifty-one thousand eight hundred sixty seventy-six dollars of smart school funding were approved uh, on the day of the election, actually, <laughs> and uh, and so uh, so that's that, that we've been waiting for a long, long, long time for this to happen. And we are we are finally there, and uh, and so we we have our funding, we have I believe our approval. So what are the next steps now? So right now we have um, our documents are getting prepared along with the phase one work, so that we can put that on the street probably right after the phase one work goes up. <clears throat> I mean goes out, and. Um, you know, that's work that's really not going to interrupt anybody at the moment since nobody's in the building. So that can, mm -hmm. you know, it's roof work. Um, you know, they can start it in July and work into November. It's not going to be a problem. Um, there's in some interior work, the summation work, again, all that stuff. You know, they'll have free reign of the building. So it's not like we have to hold them back from working in certain areas because it's occupied for whatever reason. So we're, um, you know, we're just looking to you know push that out. You know, following the phase one work, just to get it out on the street. Okay, so following phase one. Well, okay, so there are the portions of phase one that will go quickly, and there are the portions of phase one that will uh, not go so quickly. And I'm suspecting that we're going to be waiting a while for uh, for some uh, items to be manufactured for R.J. Bailey. I would assume that would not have any any cause any delay for us at Woodlands. Is that correct? Woodlands High School. Correct. The security vestibule, you mean? Security vestibule. Um, what is that storefront, Jim? Is there a long lead time on that now? <clears throat> yeah, that would probably be the only thing that would be necessary. I mean, that would be a. a a long lead. There are some um, cassettes, <clears throat> air conditioning cassette units, or split systems in the vestibule um, for the security person. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and there's a ceiling cabinet unit heater, but that's I think those are readily available. But the uh, yeah. the split AC is like a wall mounted unit, so I don't I don't know what the problem if there's a you know, issue with availability of those things. Yeah, that's not an issue. Those are two or three weeks typically. Okay, so um, yeah, we really just be the the enclosure of the vestibule itself, which is a aluminum storefront. That stuff tends to you know be like a twelve to ten to twelve week lead time on those things. Um, I I thought we were talking again initially. I thought we were talking about the mansion roof with, with, no, with no. getting it out. No, I'm so if we're talking about the vestibule. Um, I don't know if that's work you want to start this summer. You got to shut down your whole front entryway to do that work. That's work that has to happen over a summer because you can't close off that entry door. Correct. It's, a, it's a means of egress. Correct. So that was uh, that that was the, uh, the the real question there. So if you can get the materials in place, if you started ordering materials immediately, would you be able to do the work during the summer? Because yes, everybody goes in that front entrance. Right. <clears throat> that work I don't think would happen in the July to August time frame. 
Is that okay. something that could be done over a Christmas break, Jim, if all the material comes in in the fall and then we stockpile it and let the contractors do the work then? Um, I think the only problem is we're doing, uh, we're cutting out the slab, we're putting in a new foundation, pouring a new slab in that vestibule. So that could just be left. And then the doors that are there can be remain in place. They don't have to demo those. And then, um, yeah, so I guess they can slap the, you know, infill with the framing, uh, you know, in December. Yeah, if they can cut a slab and pour a you know, haunch foundation and, uh, and then pour a new finished slab in the, in the vestibule, then that would allow those doors to be utilized if there's not a, um, if not, not a step. I okay, take so you want to do the concrete work when it, the weather's warm enough and then uh, and, and then finish it off by Christmas or over yeah. Christmas break? We'll look into that and maybe we can get again some of that work done over the summer so that mm -hmm. we're as prepped as we can be waiting for that storefront to come in in the fall at some point. Okay. Uh, vestibule. Xmas. Well, I shouldn't call it winter break. Okay. Okay, Chris. So just a goofy question. Looking at the information that you provided, David, this was a you know, we've been waiting, like you said, a very, very long time. Yes. This piece of paper says 2018. We got approved right here. You say 451,000 plus. What happens if our costs come in higher? Because of inflation, okay. Right. Do we? What? How does that work with the with with the with the approved amounts from from the Smart Schools Fund? Does it mean we have to swallow costs? What's what? What happens? What happens next in that eventuality? Well, I know that we weren't at a hundred percent of cost coming from uh, from the Smart Schools Fund. There was a little bit that we were paying in addition to that. Yes. Uh, the the question is yes. How much more does that become? You're right. And Jim is writing, writing away furiously and they're probably doing a back of the envelope calculation. Oh, I don't know. I don't have an answer to that. <laughs> yeah, we'll we, have we to take a look at number. that and uh, see if we think escalation will affect that pricing. Um, you know, we can do a quick estimate, but, you know, we'll really know when the bids come in in, you know, four or five weeks or whatever that is. We'll have a really good handle on what it's going to be and whether we're under or over. We can put a couple alternates in there, maybe to try and keep costs down a little bit. We'll take a look at that as well. So the timing to put the bids out is still right after phase one? Yeah, right after phase one goes out, we'll try and get the vestibule project okay. out as well. So they'll be out on the street concurrently. Okay. And, um, that so probably so doesn't have to be out for a full four weeks. We could probably put that out for three weeks, save a little bit of time. Okay. okay. Uh, then we'll get our numbers and Again, hopefully get some of the work, hopefully it comes in under budget, we can get some of the work done this summer and prep for waiting for the materials to come in in the fall. I mean, there's no good answer, but I just don't want to hear that we have to go back to NYSET and wait another four years. So I don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. Other questions or comments on the, on the security vestibule? All right, well, I, I, I repeat, I am happy we're making progress. Okay, uh, mansion roof. Uh, let's see. So now we have money. Uh, we approved it long ago. Uh, I, I believe, uh, according to Lisa, the last time we talked to her, at least just the roof part, that, that we're good. So, um, so what does that look like in terms of your scheduling? Are we queuing that back behind the vestibule? Or, uh, or how, how will that work? Because we can do that at any time that it's not dead of winter. Right. Yeah. So we would like to obviously get that started so that the demo can happen in the summertime um you know the flat roof areas are relatively small so you know that work will probably get done in a matter of two or three weeks the asphalt shingle work will be more extensive um so that will be uh definitely something that will extend into you know november december but um you know they'll just work in areas as they go so um you know we can look at the possibility of doing a combined bid or issuing the project the, SC, the uh, security vestibule and the roof as like a in okay. one specification and then have a bid proposal form that asks for a separate price for Woodland's security vestibule, a separate price for the 
the roof project um because i don't think a roofer is going to bid on the security vestibule and the guy doing the vestibule may bid on the roof i don't know but it's probably the uh, uh the easiest way to go at this time instead of trying to do a you know three trains you know three three trains in a row you have trains one in a row you do two trains and one's got a you know double load so okay I think it actually might not be a bad time to bid it either because it won't be done. Most of the work won't be done over the summer, which is a busy schedule season. Right. We might be able to get a little bit more favor, favorable pricing, knowing that the work's going to be done in the fall. And, it, you know, it's not time critical in that building because the building is not occupied. So it kind of works out well. Okay. <clears throat> uh, questions on the mansion roof? Very well. Okay, now we've we've done the, uh, the 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 big four or five projects, and now we're into the the building by building, uh, smaller set of projects. Um, Mr. Puglisi. Yep, I should probably uh I'll take over for a little bit here. Uh, the ECP building, the uh, the warmer. So, uh, the, I guess it was one of the uh, things that kind of fell through the cracks for a little while. Um, I called up a bunch of vendors, and I got one with a lead time of uh, I was told thirty days um we're about a week into it now hopefully uh that'll arrive soon um that's the the food warmer for the uh kitchen in the early childhood program i guess they were uh, i believe they're heating up food at the uh at the main building and transporting it mm -hmm. um i was in the kitchen it didn't look like anything was functional there so this this warmer i've seen some of the warmers in other buildings that so you could uh actually heat up uh small pre-cooked things to thaw out uh, Hopefully that'll be a nice addition to their uh, food food program there. So what's the capacity on one of these things? Um, typically, I uh, that one I believe it had four four to six racks, depending on how you set them up. It, it would be, it should be enough to take care of uh, their whole program there for uh, breakfast for for breakfast purposes. Okay. So that wouldn't need any additional electrical work in there. Um, there's electric in the room. It's just a matter of, uh, depending on what plug it comes with. Um, but it's, that's, uh, just a matter of changing the plugs. Okay. And, uh, the unit is actually on wheels. So it does move within the space, um, you know, for cleaning purposes, which is good. Good. And, uh, other questions on that? All right. Um, go ahead. Okay. Uh, next was, uh, Lee F. Jackson. Um, the heating coil uh, has arrived. Uh, I'm trying to coordinate with uh, crown, uh, to do the installation of the uh, last week in June after the students get out. Um, he hasn't confirmed the date, but that's uh, where we left off. He's got to get back to me with that, but that's what we're uh, looking for. Mm -hmm. There was a uh, mention that there, the, in the, they saw in the winter that there was a small boiler leak. Uh, is that uh, is that going to be taken care of as well? Okay, I wasn't aware of that, but I'm sure that I'll make sure that that happens when they're working in the in the boiler room, if it's at all possible. That would make sense. The guys are there doing the work. They're taking the coil apart, transporting it across the room, putting it back together. Um, mm -hmm. They're going to have a, a couple of mechanics there. Um, I'll, I'll run that by uh, the uh, Pat from Crown uh, when I when he gets back to me. If not, I'll uh, I'll make sure he's aware of that. That that's something that we want to have done at the same time while the contractors that are there. Yes. Good. Okay. Any questions on uh, on that part of it, Gabriella? Hi. I just saw Megan put the comment that. Uh, that I was just about to bring up, but basically that um, just camp, just, I guess, keep in mind camp does start right away at Lee of Jackson. So is it something that's going to be, I guess, uh, figured out when the kids are at the pool or is it going to be done after hours? Oh, for the, uh, for the work in the boiler, that's on a, a separate floor, I believe. Okay. And okay. that's, you know, uh, we also have an asbestos abatement going on. Um, on this on a separate floor that's a different that's a different corridor but that would be tented off and they would have to uh, uh, 
have a different uh, access to that, but I believe that this, the plan was to have it when the, before the camp started. I had coordinated that for the first week in uh, July, starting uh, Wednesday the 6th for the, uh, for the abatement. And the turnaround time was uh, would be uh, about two weeks before the flooring contractor gets into the space. After the uh, abatement was done, the uh, air monitoring comes back to finals. Got it. Okay. okay. Okay, Megan. Um, just to clarify the dates of camp, camp runs the six weeks as school ends. So it ends the first week in August. So it's there all of July, that last week in June. So it's the, the second week in August through September, the first week in September when the building is actually empty. But I know camp is obviously a lot smaller than the, the school being full of students typically. Correct. Uh, from what I'm from what I'm told, the students will be uh, in in a separate area, and uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, tile asbestos tile replacement. It's not friable, and there should there shouldn't be uh, much contamination at at all. You know, into the out into after the surrounding areas after the filters. What are the hours that the camp runs? I, that I, I don't know. The kids get there at nine and they leave at three. If I may, when I was visiting yesterday, and Mr. Puglisi, you'll know more than I will, but I just want to back up what you're saying. I, I learned that it would be tented off, that the campers would not be using that part of the building at all, mm -hmm. that bathrooms that they will be accessing will be on a different floor through a different entrance will be well separated from where the asbestos work is being done um, there may or may not be an issue with the adult access to adult size bathrooms but i i don't know because they will not have access to the adult bathrooms which are up near the um the uh principal's office um so i don't know what the plans are for that um but from my understanding, Mr. Puglisi, you're right. That it's going to be separated from where the kids will be using the facility, facilities they'll have access to. Okay, so adult bathrooms, the question mark. Okay. Correct. So I don't know if, if the town is bringing in porta potties or I don't know what the communication is on that piece. Okay, so we've got Megan and Gabrielle. You both have your hands up. Is there, are there more questions? But yeah, I had one more. Now I just can, for LFJ, can we speak to where they'll be? So typically in the past, the camp would be in the ECP wing in the front of LFJ. That's where they were housed. So they're not there. So are they up on the first grade level or are they down on the K? I don't know specifically where, but I know in that area. I don't remember, I don't remember which. Yeah, we know it's that side of the building. I don't know if it's upstairs or downstairs. So right. then for, for camp, they won't be using the main entrance. They'll be going around the back. I don't know all those logistics because um, that wasn't the focus of my visit. I just asked. Sure, about sure. Sorry. <laughs> and that, so Greenberg Rec is the one in charge of that, I suppose. And I suppose they're coordinating with the building principal and with Mr. Puglisi if there's specific issues to the facility. So, so I'd start with the town. Okay. For questions about the camp and if there's some issues that no one's really addressed, then they should be having discussions with our district. Sorry. Okay. Gabriella. Hi, sorry, just a follow up question. I understand uh, that you're saying things are going to be kind of like, uh, kind of not tented off, but covered and kind of prevent any type of uh, asbestos becoming airborne. Is that as far as the vents within the school is something, I guess, that area where the work is going to be done, is it going to be shut down or? I guess, how does that part work? How it typically works with an abatement, the uh, contractors tent off uh, an area with a plastic, double plastic, and they actually have their own ventilation for uh, positive pressure. They have their uh, filters that filter the air out to the, uh, out to the outside. So they're, they're actually in, in a containment. That's how, it, that's how it's designed. Maybe the uh, architects could uh, embellish a little more, but that's... Uh, the Reader's Digest version is if you're in, you're in a containment, um, 
whenever you go into the containment, you're, you have uh, your suit on, there's a uh, wash stations where the guys uh, change when they come out. Um, all the, all the air is uh, filtered and blown to the outside. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Dennis, is there any way to have them maybe work three to 11, like second shift when? Uh, I don't when know. I, I know that, I know that Saturdays, uh, at least one Saturday was included in their original contract. Mm -hmm. um, as far as after hours, I, I don't know. Uh, typically, typically the uh, abatement contractors, they get in there and they like to, you know, work until the job's done. But uh, I, I, could, I could call uh, the contractor and find out if that's a possibility when there's, you know, after hours work. I know that it, at least one Saturday was included. Okay. Other questions? Okay, so we've done the asbestos. That takes us to high view. High view. And that was a Lisa Raymond piece, right? Uh, the 46,800 was the price tag uh, for, the, uh, for the third grade wing windows. You have a, an area where you have doors, but no openable windows. And the Board of Education needs to approve a budget code transfer. According to Lisa, the amount is great enough uh, in order to do that. And, uh, and so that needs to be folded into an upcoming agenda. And uh, she said it will be. Do we know, do you know where that number came from? I uh, believe there was a certain uh, number of nine windows for uh, 5,200 a piece, I believe it was without looking at my notes. I, had, I saw that somewhere. Uh, it was an older of the proposal. I'd like to see what type of windows are getting installed. Yeah, I don't, I don't have that information. I just, at, at, at this point, I just saw an email yeah, um, I'm, I'm sure the information is available somewhere, but I, I don't know. Uh, so coordinate it with BBS. Yes. Yeah, I'd rather you know, just get an eye on who is the contract, who gave the price and what the product is that's being used because windows are very, you know, tricky. You don't want to put in a garbage set of windows. And Yeah, I, I was not a I did not see an, like an official quote. It was just a I'm a, just revealing puzzle pieces at this point. And yep. that's where. Uh, I did see okay. something like that and I inquired about it. Yeah, so we have a, okay, so when we get more information, just forward that to me. You got it. And it's Jim Okay. Uh, RJ Bailey, go ahead. Uh, the gym for next year's budget. Okay. Um, today I, I met with the, uh, the flooring contractor and, sh and she dropped off of a, uh, some uh, some floor samples, and I I brought those over to the principal uh, Shipa, and mm -hmm. I guess there was a conversation. the uh, The proposal that she had was for the poured uh, synthetic floor, and I guess upon talking to the principal, she thought that we were going with the wooden floor. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess the uh, gym teachers thought that that was a, a, a better floor. Um, so I, I, I let the uh, uh, Milburn Flooring know that there was somewhere along the line there was a mix-up. Uh, typ typically, the the wooden floor is going to be cheaper though than the synthetic floor. And uh, virtues we of each. Point, we were at the point this afternoon that she was going to see if the material was available uh, if they had the wood for the floor. That's where we left off. This happened uh, this morning. She dropped off uh, samples. I brought them over to the uh, principal. And then we went back to, uh, we, we were interested in the wood floor. Yeah, I did. Uh, so somewhere along the line, there was a miscommunication mm -hmm. uh, between the principal, Mike, the contractor, or whatever it was. But uh, we're working on that. As She didn't get back to me at the end of uh, business today, but. I'm sure I'll speak with her uh, tomorrow or I'll put a call into her to find out what's going on, if the material's there. And we'll continue the discussion of uh, are we going to go with the synthetic or the, with the wood? Mm -hmm. Katie? 
Yeah, I'm just curious, like what the comparison of durability is between the synthetic materials and the wood. And also, is there a leakage coming in from the roof? Like we don't have the Bailey roof done yet. Does that factor in like what you would choose, which material if it gets water damage? I could speak to the wearability and stuff. Um... Yes, synthetic floors have a specific use. I would not recommend them, you know, over a gym, over a wood floor. Um, wood floors will last you 30 years, 40, 50 years, as long as you sand them and take care of them and seal them properly. But if you do have a space that's prone to high moisture and, and humidity, um, and the floors constantly have issue with buckling and things, uh, then you may have no other option than to go with a synthetic floor. Um, sometimes you'll see if a uh, a school has like a lower level wrestling room or fitness room that they they use. They would put the synthetic floor in there, um, you know, for those type of spaces. But uh, you know, a wood floor is certainly more durable, more uh, easily maintained, and I think the better choice to go with. But if there's a desire to go with a uh, you know rubberized surface or poured surface, um, you know, there would be specific reasons for that. So if the existing roof is leaking and has problems, um, you'd be better off taking care of those leaks because eventually they will be taken care of and then you'll be stuck with a rubber floor that they may not want mm -hmm. um, versus you know, putting down the wood floor now and getting it rained on. <laughs> okay. You know, I don't know the answers to that. Qu those questions. I can't remember what was the deal with the floor. I just wanted us to bring that out to make sure those questions get answered. I know that one area of the floor had kind of gone soft towards the uh, towards the doors that that are, are next to the hallway that goes out the front doors of the of the the school that we never use. I know that that was a problem. I don't know why it was a problem. <clears throat> if they're exterior doors, most likely there's water coming in under the sill and it rotted out the sleepers underneath the uh, wood floor. So when they tear out the wood floor in that space, they would. Do the sleep, you know, the wood sleepers as well, and put down a new, um, you know, new product that would support the floor. So any of those soft areas and and dips and things would be all taken care of. Okay. I guess the other thing too with going with the synthetic floor is you do need to, if there's any sleepers under that floor now, which are typically like two inches or so. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes there's a water barrier over the concrete, which is asbestos. I don't know if that had been tested. Um, and then you would need to infill with concrete to get to a level surface in order to put down the rubber. So it can get very costly because you need to make up that two inches of, of space with a either lightweight concrete, self-leveling compound or combination thereof. Um, so be very, you know, look at this, the proposal carefully and see what it includes. But I would be curious to know if there was, you know, asbestos testing done on the um, below that wood floor. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times in very old buildings, the, the barrier that they put down, it's like tar coating. Um, it does contain asbestos. If it's a paper or if it's a you know, liquid applied, uh, we want to know that. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm actually on that. I, uh, I, I spoke with Mike and he did, uh, I believe that a uh, core was taken in, in one section of the gym. But being that it's an old building, I contacted the uh, environmental contractor actually today. Now that the, mm -hmm. we know that we have the funding for this, and I told him uh, he's going to be there on Monday to pull out a, a about ten samples or so, because it's it, it is an old building. And there's two different addition. There's an a different addition on the building. Uh, there's like a couple of different pieces of the building. So you might you might not find something in one section of the gym, but where the hallway where the old building was, the older building to the newer building, which was built ten years later. Mm -hmm. uh, I told him to, to pull some samples out so we see what we're dealing with. Okay. Chris? Well, and then Katie's other point about the roof leaks. Right now, my, my mind is all mush, and I'm trying to find the spreadsheet that had our multiple project updates. Did we have Bailey roof leaks patched, or was that, am I misremembering? You're thinking about the auditorium piece where we had three Bailey roof leak patches that needed to happen. We know that, we, that we've done a, at one point also. So right. So so there's stuff in the building condition survey that talks about uh, roof leaks and problems. But 
part of the part of the leaking that we had was was because we needed to do brick pointing, and there's been some brick pointing done, and uh, uh, especially on the upper floors uh, along uh, Bailey. So the the leakage is not happening to the extent that it was. So I'm not I don't recall specifically any leaks in the gym. So I'm not thinking that that's a major issue. And does anyone ha have any different experience they want to recall? I was actually over there today and then we had a, a, a ton of rain uh, today. Right. I was there actually twice during the day and I didn't see any uh, water coming down into the gym area today. Okay. All right. That's good. Okay, all good. Other comments or questions? Eight eleven. We probably need to pick it up a little bit. Um, so uh, we did, we did the floor curbs and sidewalks. Uh, I believe we were, we have uh, we've used up our uh, allotment of uh, of funding and uh, and need to budget anything we do. I think I think in the uh, I think the insurance companies went around to all the different buildings and came up with a a list of things that needed to be done. There was something on one side of the building, not the main entrance where people come through, uh, that, that needed to be done. And I, I think we had to uh, move to next year's budget to take care of that. And I don't think it's a large project, but I don't have the specifics. Um, but that's where that is. Um, any comment? Okay. Uh, and then you want to talk about the, um, the electrical issue and room, the 200 series rooms. Oh, it, uh, yes. Um, I guess that uh, with the addition of the, uh, the uh, smart boards, uh, with the warmer weather, and uh, once you start to put the uh, air conditioners on, it's uh, blowing the circuits. So it's, uh, you know, it's, that's the old wiring. Um, so uh, I spoke with Nick from uh, uh, the, the electrical contract, Nick's Electric. And they were proposing, uh, I, was, I, was, I was over there actually uh, looking at the site this morning. There's a kiln room and a, uh, a server-like panel room where they were going to run some uh, conduit to uh, feed those uh, four rooms uh, of, uh, so they, they could run a fresh power and, cir and, a cir and circuits for the uh, breakers for those uh, four rooms. Okay, questions or comments? Cut and dried, good. Woodlands. Asphalt and parking lots resurfaced prior to May 17th budget vote. How'd it go? <laughs> All the uh, the asphalt and the parking the parking lots uh, resurfaced. Um, like you said, it hasn't been lined yet. Mm -hmm. um, the potholes have been uh, covered. Uh, let's see. Katie. Hi, so that teacher's lot by the gym? The teacher's lot by the gym has been paved, yes. Right, that was paved. So it's now like no curb or anything. Is that how it's going to stay? It's like you could just pull in at any point, whereas it used to be like an entrance and an exit. Yeah, so I, I wasn't aware of uh, how they were going to do the uh, project. Um, I know that there was some talk about maybe putting a double spaces now and possibly you. Uh, measuring it so we could actually get more parking in that way. So pulling out and pulling in, I think that's what Mike was uh, going to have uh, the guy measure to see if we could have, uh, rather than just pull in, you know, double up the spaces. I believe that that's uh, how he, he left it with the contractor, but I'm not, uh, I, I, I really don't know, to be honest with you. Thanks. Okay. Um, gym floor included in next year's budget. So you have the, the small gym and you have the large gym. And I know we did the small gym a couple of years ago and that leaves the large gym, which had some issues. And I, I think it was termite damage and all of that. And uh, that's another project. Have you worked on that yet? I haven't been uh, privy to that part of the uh, conversation yet, no. Okay. Um, so we'll hear more about that soon, I'm sure. Yep, um, I'll look into that and find out uh, if there was any, uh, was, was there anything ever proposed or anything? Did we get any quotes Do we know or no? I have not seen the quotes. Okay. I know that we were, we, we were, uh, we figured out that whatever the ballpark estimate they made, 
uh, that we could handle it in the upcoming year's budget. Okay. Uh, but I don't, uh, I don't have any documentation on anything more specific. You're going to have to search for that. Yep. No problem. Okay. Uh, Jim, do we have anything from your sit from your end? I don't think we quoted anything, but I'm sure Michael and Lisa had something to base that budget number on. Right. That's not familiar. Right. So we, if Lisa were here, we will. Okay. Check with Lisa. Okay. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing from us. Okay. Okay. So um, then leak in room three thirteen. Um, uh, a small leak from a heating control. Uh, one of the old diaphragms. There's a. Uh, Dozens of them in the building. I'm told it's a common problem. They're uh, they just uh, corrode and the seals uh, fail. Uh, it was turned off and the parts were on order. That's they were going to uh, come back. Uh, you know, after school's out. Now that the heat's off for the season, should be a, a minor repair. To, that's uh, you know, I, I, I'm told that they've done uh, dozens of them in the building over the over the years. It's a fairly common problem, I guess. Okay. Questions or comments? Uh, yeah. oh, I, I, Danny, uh, could you uh, possibly during the summer uh, or even before the uh, school lets out, uh, go through Woodlands and even talk to some of the teachers in the room? Because I am aware that not all the problems that are in the Woodlands classrooms have been uh, addressed. And I think some teachers would probably appreciate seeing your face, getting to know you so that they can tell you what's going on because many of the students will tell you things are going on and then people will say, oh, I didn't hear that and I didn't hear that. But my two kids are Woodlands and they're great photographers. So <laughs> they'd be more than happy to, to, to show you what's going on in live and in living color. So I think maybe since you're brand new, just go, Someday it may take a little of your time, but check out with some of the teachers and you can get some, some new thing to address over the summer. Yes, I have. Actually, uh, today I was uh, speaking with uh, one of the uh, teachers, uh, one of the history teachers. He was uh, trying to uh, do a little uh, lifestyles learning in his classroom. Mm -hmm. And I had the, uh, the flooring contractor was in his room and uh, we spent some, uh, some, some time with him. Uh, one of the teachers down the hall, he, he's had an air conditioner that uh, hadn't worked in, uh, I don't know, I saw some uh, emails on it for a while. Uh, we, uh, we set him up the other day. He was very uh, pleased. So I'm trying to go out and show my face and establish goodwill by fixing things. Good. Yeah. That's, it, it never hurts. <laughs> no, no, not up to us. Thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Okay. Bus garage. Um, I don't know about the uh, the the charging station, but I know that that uh that parking lot towards the back it's um that's in a that's uh in need of help. Uh, they 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 really don't even have a blacktop from what I saw in the back. It was it looked like uh pretty much just dirt. There was some uh, very large potholes back there. That was uh. That's uh, definitely uh, a, a full replacement for that section in the back there, at least. Ashley. Yeah, so uh, on the electric bus recharging station, I just wanna make it clear, the, the reason we raised that uh, during a previous meeting is there is some talks right now about grants that are being potentially put out there for school districts to start encouraging school districts to start working on getting electrified buses because of the law that's going to come out. I forgot 2035, I think is the deadline for all buses to be electric and mm -hmm. et cetera. So with that said, um, it wouldn't be a bad idea to try to get us at the front of the line and see what we can get in terms of that vehicle recharging station. So that's why that was raised. The goal here is not to add on another $100,000, $200,000 project that the district has to foot. Uh, but if there was a way to take advantage of some of those grants, we can at least get in the line for that. So that, that's the context for that one. And I should tell you that there used to be a uh, cleanup. Uh, uh, I, I think that there used to be on-site maintenance of buses at the bus garage. And there is an area that, that uh, had to be a cleanup site for a while. And that's been taken care of for a number of years, but uh, I'm not sure 
where the unpaved area is relative to that, just for your information. Megan. Um, I think I'm confused on the bus garage. So Royal Coach is the bus company, right? But mm -hmm. that's outside, that's not part of our district. We pay them. But then are right. they renting They're space? They're like leasing the, the leasing the building from us. So they're, but so we don't own the buses. They own the buses. They own the buses. And, if we're unhappy just, about the rusty hoods, then we've got to go to them. So how how does it? Because I mean, it, it's a significant cost to us for the the busing. What? How does the leasing pan out to them? Like where? Obviously, we're responsible for our property and keeping it up for them, but. How would that work as far as like it would benefit that, the bus company? I know that it's included in the bus contract. Uh, I don't know any details beyond that. Okay. And so we need to talk to the transportation director if we will really want to get to, into details. So what exactly is a question and we can forward it? Um, I don't know. I just, I don't think I was... I, I know that it was on our campus ultimately, but I never thought about the fact that we're leasing out the property to the bus company and then the bus company that, you know, we right. pay. So we're their landlord them. and, uh, yeah. and therefore how do they, how do they complain to us when they're unhappy with the conditions and all of that, right? That's what you're looking for? Sure. And then, I mean, I know, I don't remember when it was, I think it was last year. I know Frank Gunn had mentioned that the bus company was not pursuing electric vehicles and they had no desire to um in in the near future at all as much as like that conversation was completely dead so i don't know i know if if there are grants out there that might change that conversation but it sounded like the bus company was very firm on the fact that they were not pursuing and had no interest in it last conversation we had with frank gunn about it okay um and I, I, I can't tell you when the last year of the contract is and whether there will, uh, whether that will be an issue when you negotiate a new contract or not. So. I know that the set of buses that they had ordered that were to replace half their fleet uh, were not going to be electric. I don't know what happens after that. Okay, Chris? I was just going to amplify what Ashley was saying and just give the public more information. Um, hold on, what do we want to read? Basically that um, the electric vehicle infrastructure could be 100% fully funded by, I believe, federal mm -hmm. grants and that those applications were starting to be accepted as, as of late April, I believe. And I can't actually find the grants this second, of course, when I need to. Yeah. Um, but those grants are available to the end of 2026 or until the funds run out, which is why we brought it up to prompt the conversation to make the plans and get the money before they run out of money. Um, mm -hmm. So hopefully at the next meeting, we can get an update and, and or at least a direction on where we might be headed. Because even if we don't own the buses, if we have the in infrastructure on campus, no matter who has and that will contract, change the equation economically. Right. Right. As our contract, we'll have that availability there. And we could even if we wanted to expand it, you know, put in some EV stations for staff closer to buildings. That's a whole other ball of wax that we don't need to get into right now. Mm -hmm. Jessica. I thought I remembered Lisa saying last meeting that it would be Royal Coach's responsibility to acquire the buses. Um, mm -hmm. That's just what I remembered. But, and I know Croton, part of their budget that just passed included something around, around the electric buses. Um, so I think it is worthwhile for us to get, to, to let, at least learn as much as we can. And if other districts are already obtaining them, like if Tarrytown was able to get a grant, why can't the same representative get something for us also? Um, they, there should be some collective bargaining happening um, to make sure that all the schools that are represented are, are getting equal um, opportunity to get this, especially since all of our students get bust. Um, that the impact of what's happening in terms of the pollution and the diesel costs, like how much is spent in our budget for diesel is huge. Um, mm -hmm. And having just gotten electric panels on our house or solar panels, um, the impact is impressive of what it does to your electricity bill 
and now having an electric car that's running off of that. Um, I, I think it just, we have to move beyond the, okay, trees, yes, but what can we do that's gonna have these larger improvements and how do we people make people understand um, mm -hmm. how valuable the, a resource is to be. Good for you. Okay, Ashley. Yeah, um, the one other thing I wanted to add is, and, and this is from memory, so don't quote me here. I remember reading that part of that funding was also going to mean that electric buses that are put into place would have their energy costs reimbursed by those grants. So that's a that's another reason. Oh, to, right. Especially that may change the entire equation. Okay. The other thing, uh, the other thing to keep in mind is the last time um, we spoke with Mr. Gunn about this. Electric buses were averaging more than $400,000 per bus cost. Mm -hmm. So it was a significant expense, but that was before all of these grants came up. Um, so yes, while Royal Coach is responsible for their hardware and what they choose, um, we are responsible for choosing our transportation provider. And obviously fuel costs would be a significant uh, conversation for us. So that's why I just wanted to keep that conversation going so we don't lose that context. Mm -hmm. uh, it might have a bigger impact on us than some of our uh, peer school districts. Thank you. Thank you. Steve. Yeah, on top of what Ashley said, because I brought up the electric school buses uh, back in 2018 and 19, um, I just posted in the chat an article from the Hudson Independent that will talk to you about Peter Hawkins and what they're doing with George Latimer, exactly what uh, Ashley was saying. Um, I was hearing about this from 2018 and 2019 because I work mm -hmm. sometimes with Peter Hawkins and I was trying to get the people to see ahead because you didn't know what was gonna be happening. And we have to really be focused forward. And this district many times has been focused oh, well, let's see what we did last year. We can't do this because negative Nelly, negative Nelly. And meanwhile, Upstate is already pushing ahead to get electric buses in place in another year. Scarsdale, White Plains, they already got a, one electric bus. Go. So we've always played that game of, well, we can't, we can't, we're too small, we're too this, we're too that. And we've got to change our ways. And now we're sitting here with exorbitant gas prices, and we don't know where to begin, but these people have already began at least with the research. So we have to stop saying even about, oh, well, I don't know if we can do it and just say we have to do it. So we need to focus like a couple of people said, getting our legislators and everybody else to get behind Greenberg Central School District. They're failing us. So we have to really put the, the pressure on them right now. Thank you. Chris. Sorry, last comment on this topic. I will say um, in February, I attended a meeting with some of our local legislators or some of them, a lot of them from all over mm -hmm. Westchester and they do fully support this, but some of this is us needing to take the ball and run with it. So, you know, I, I think we're redirecting some attention and, and we're emphasizing here in this committee, at least, and David, maybe we need to make an official recommendation that we want the district to explore this option. Um, but I'll point out as, as far as a place to start, Mr. Morton, um, according to the research that, that, that I was given, um, NYSERDA, the New York State, in, oh gosh, environment, I don't know, NYSERDA. <laughs> research, development, and agency, I think, or something Thank you. like that. that. That sounds about right. Um, that they'll provide direct technical assistance to districts in applying for those grants, because some of those grants can be a beast to work with. Um, and logistics for the electric buses. So if, if we need a place to start and how to start that grant process, we apparently can get some free help from them. That's all. Okay. So we need to come back with something a little more substantive before we make a recommendation to the board, but we need to research that and come back with it. Okay. What, sorry, but let me just ask, what do you mean we need to come back with something more substantive? What, what are we looking for? What's our homework? I think our homework is to find out what the specific grants are, what the economic impacts of those grants are. And we come back and we say, we think we should pursue this. So the US EPA prepare for clean school bus funding. 
I'll email you some things. Okay. okay. Ashley? Um, I was going to suggest that we ask administration in the interim between this meeting and the next meeting to start that process. Okay. Uh, specifically because, you know, as, as a committee, we're not supposed to go too deep with this stuff, but administration absolutely can. So if they can start looking at the NYSERDA webpage for applying for those grants and talking to rural coach to Mr. Gunn, and they can start all those conversations that we can't have, unfortunately. And we can talk, we have a liaison for our committee and we can do it that way very easily. Thank you. Fred? Just wanted to mention that we have looked at a couple of these for a couple of other school districts in preparation for electric buses. And these things show a 20 or 30 amps a bus. And when you have several buses in there, it adds up very quickly. It typically means a new service to the building. That bus garage does not have that large of an electrical service, plus a lot of infrastructure. So it is a fairly entailed and a fairly expensive project. So something to keep in mind as you're looking at grants. Okay. Thank you. Other comments or questions? Okay, that takes care of that. Um, it's now 8.32. Uh, phase two is obviously uh, the, the, the next uh, hurdle to get over. And uh, uh, we've, we've talked in many previous meetings ab uh, about uh, uh, what the priorities for a phase two proposal will be. We expect the administration to come back with a phase two proposal and, and we may end up going to bond. Uh, and it, it will include ventilation, building envelopes, BCS priority one and two items, ECP classrooms uh, would require a bond proposition, could be partially offset by year-end fund balances and reserves. We now have a, a container to store those in since we have the, we, since we now have a, a, ca a capital reserve fund that we can populate. Uh, the, uh, once the energy performance contract is done, we expect something to come back. I don't know that we want to uh, necessarily fold the uh, the RJ Bailey piece into that because we want it to move quickly. And if we have a, the larger the project is, the longer it will take to plan. Um, the ex officio board member uh, will be doing the polling. We've already mentioned that. Uh, Steve, you came back and said, I think we might want to do more than one thing. Uh, so we'll, we'll take a look at the results of that in an upcoming meeting. And uh, I, I think there'll initially be a, a report uh, to the board and then it'll come back to us and we'll see how we, we want to organize things. And of course, we need to seek additional funding sources as always. Any, any comments or question on that? Katie? Yes, about seeking additional funding sources. And I saw before somewhere like, or maybe, you know, in minutes, like explore grants. So mm -hmm. detail speed, like who would, who would be doing that? We don't have a grant writer to my knowledge. Mm -hmm. And we don't have like a development arm at the district. So who would be seeking additional funding sources? So that's a business department issue, right? And so then the, the business department needs to have uh, sufficient staff in order to do that. And the question is, is there anyone already in the business department who can take on a responsibility and possibly have a stipend as opposed to adding headcount? Um, and that's a Lisa Raymond question. So we need to ask. Sounds like a good next step. Stipend for grant writing. Okay. Other comments or questions? I have another question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, when you mentioned paving, repaving the bus garage, I haven't looked. Uh, I haven't looked on the building condition survey lately, so I don't know this, but does anyone know? Um, what's the story with the road to the track? Why is that an unpaved road? Is, is it ever in the plans to pave it? Uh, and what was the priority? And do we know an estimate of cost? I don't have that in my head. We can, come, we can go and, and come back with an answer. Road to track, cost. Do you, do you guys remember if, it, is it part of the BCS? It's not, in a, it's not a building. I do not remember. I would have to look and see where we even would have attached that, which building we would have attached that to. Um, so right. I'll, have to, I'll have to let you know. I don't know. Does the press box have a, have a number? Is it inspected? 
The press box is not an occupied building, so it is not inspected. I have it open. Sorry to interrupt. Chris? Uh, I'm looking at the Willens Middle High School BCS item 55, other site features. The notes here say at track bleachers, paved driveway at Southwest corner. So that's, at, okay, so that's just the corner there at the football field and at handicapped ambulance parking. Repave front north lot and bus lot. Uh, repave asphalt play. Maybe that means area. Um, area adjacent to tennis courts. Repair and overlay east and west lots. So I don't know what east and west lots are. Maybe that's the part we just did. I don't know. None of that sounds like the uh, like the driveway out to the uh, out to the football field. Okay. Well, just because they mentioned the part near the track and the bleachers, which is right, right. So, but it's not the connection. It's it, it it's right. at the site, right? Okay. Gotcha. All right. So. So. When we do discuss Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Mr. Sibu, you, you have this intense look of concentration on your face. Is, am, yeah, am I no, I'm, I'm reading the, the same thing Chris was just reading. I'm trying to think. I, I did not write that section of the report, either Jim or Joe did. So um, I'll have to, I think Joe wrote this section of the report on the high school. So I'll have to go back and check with him and let you know. Okay. Okay. BBS will check. And that's the road that leads back to the football field that you're asking about? Yes. Yes. So you have your main driveway and then there's a, there's a gate and then right. the, the, it's a long straight stretch of road. Yes. It, it, yeah. Okay. Is that something you want to have paved or is it okay as a gravel type surface, which is you know, easier to maintain other than plowing, I would say, but, or less expensive to maintain, I should say. Mr. Seba, have you ever driven down it? I have not. I've only walked down it. <laughs> so there's, uh, on the one hand, you, you, you will never, unless you want to destroy your car, you will never uh, drive down it at a speed great enough to actually uh, be a, a danger to the students who have to sometimes walk that, the length of that long road. Um, so uh, to a certain extent, the, uh, the poor condition of the road is a safety feature. Um, so if you, if, if you were to pave it, you would definitely need to have there be a place other than the road itself for the students to walk on. And to counter that though, yeah. how fast does an ambulance get through the gravel compared to a paved road? Uh, not as fast. Yeah, I think it's worth discussing. I mean, I, I, I don't know many. I haven't been, I've been to some other school districts and stuff. I don't recall any gravel roads. Okay. Gravel roads are actually, or technically allowed as a means of access around buildings and things, as long as they're, you know, there's a base in their real gravel road. Uh, mm -hmm. So technically, it's probably allowed for ambulance access, but uh, if it's in that bad of shape, um, that would be a problem. So I will look into that. Okay. Yeah, maybe, Mr. Buglis, you can um, take a look, because I had heard something about even the gravel that's there right now, like it's in bad shape. I personally haven't gone down lately, but I did, someone mention that. Okay. I. Uh Yes, I've been down the, the road a, a couple of times in the last uh, several weeks. I know that there's um, a spring down once you get towards the uh, uh, the radius of like where the uh, football field would be. Um, that uh, has a, a drain in it that was clogged. And after that, it, uh, it seemed to alleviate a lot of the, of the runoff. But the road, it's it's uh, it looks like there's a stone some millings mixed in there um it it, it definitely needs to be maintained uh, several times a year um for uh yeah you drop some item four or something down but it's it's like like i said i've seen students walking in there there's puddles um when we're uh driving the uh, truck uh out to the uh football field or so mm -hmm. it, it, it's you're you're not making uh quick progress, like you say, but it is traversable, you know, it's, 
it's not optimal, but it, 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 the road definitely needs some attention. I would suggest we probably need to put some gravel in there in the meantime for just for safety issues to have it more of a similar level surface. Um, yes. But if we're going to talk about paving, I don't, you know, we need to discuss priorities again, um, as well as other issues, but just, just to deal with the immediate safety issues. Because um, when I'm, I'm thinking ahead to the fall, just so you know, Mr. Puglisi, when cross country has their meets, they run down that road. So definitely by the fall, uh, before we have uh, schools coming and running on our property, we need to have that at least leveled out with uh, with gravel, just so it's not. Um, yes, uh, I, I, I've been told that, that it is uh, regularly maintained with uh, buckets of uh, material. Okay. Um, and, you know, back rated a little bit when when it's uh, starting to get out of control with the uh, potholes or the or the water puddles. Yeah, because the other concern, if we pave it, OK, we don't need to discuss all this now. There's vernal ponds there. There's all sorts of other issues, too, that we need to discuss. But yes, there are. The issues are many. Uh, so uh, at this point, it's 842. Uh, anybody have any other concerns? Yes, Chris. Sorry, I'm sorry. One last thing I have a question about. How often do we do pest control in the buildings? I know we have a contract, but I don't remember how often it's done at each building. Uh, they're there. Oh, my aunt, yeah, they're there uh, a monthly. Monthly. At least unless there's a problem. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Other questions or concerns? Do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Do second. I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 The meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody, for coming. I'm we're night. making some progress. Have a good evening. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Mr.